get this going. Let's see what's up. What's up, everybody? What's going on? This is your host, ID Jester. Thanks for joining me. All righty. So as you can see, we got some, uh, <laughs> well, new, got some new stuff to talk about here. It's got me some APA, APBA stuff. That's right. And where the hell are my glasses? There we are. All right. Now I can actually see something. So I'm looking to see all of my new stuff here. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's just scoot that out of the way. So uh, what we have here is the, what is this? This is the 1970 set. 1970 set. I've got some uh, lineups already made up and ready to play a game here. Hopefully uh, we'll get to that shortly, yes. So uh, there's the 1970 set. It does have, supposed to have the master card symbols on them and I'm assuming that sets See, and this is where I need some help because I, <clears throat> I'm certainly not an APBA expert. I know there's some f nice fellows that come to my channel that are APBA experts. I'm hoping they will show up and give me a um, little tutorial session here. But I am familiar with, you know, the basic premise behind it. I do have, uh, hey, Mac Dog, played the hell out of this way back in the day along with the horse racing game. All right, thanks for joining me, Mag Dog. What's going on? How you doing? I'm gonna get a drink here. Six six are good. <laughs> usually, from what I understand, usually. So this is a 1970 cent. I'm gonna move this uh, over here so we can look at the rest of what I got here. So I ended up getting four different seasons here. This is 1970, it has all the different teams. And the cards, look at the cards are in great quality. I bought these second hand from a guy that was selling some stuff. I don't have any, I didn't I didn't at the time have any APBA stuff. So I figured, uh, wow, I gotta, uh, I'm gonna grab some of these sets that he was selling. So. Great quality. They're hardly been used. Um, and they do have the master symbols, which is what I was looking for. I don't know how to read all that stuff yet. I did uh, print out the master board game edition rules and was reading them, though most of it's pretty, pretty. Uh, Levens are good too, says Mad Dog. <laughs> um, but I did uh, get a copy of the Merino boards. So um, probably pretty easy to figure out. The only, the only question I have is this fielding thing, fielding three, fielding two, fielding one. Not sure how that is. And I'm not sure what the, what the actual pitcher grades are. So B grade pitcher two, don't know, I have any idea what the two is. I'm assuming that's like his range. Y, Z, and then 30. I'm not sure what all that is. I wish, uh, I'm not sure. I know the first number is their, um, well, that's interesting. He doesn't have one. David Johnson doesn't have one, but normally their uh, run rating is first. Why some of them have it and some don't, I don't know. Oh, I bet you if they don't have it, that means they're just average. Average, average, and slow or fast, S or F. I got it. See? Been way too long for me to remember how much of how to play. Oh, all right. Well, maybe you'll get back into it after uh, you watch us trying this out. So that was the 1970s season. Let's see what's in box number two here. Well, I took, a, I took everything out of the box. So we have uh, more APBA cards here, and this looks like, why is that going to drive me insane? There we go. All right. Is, this is the 1986 set. Again, real nice shape, real good cards, real good quality. Uh, full set of... 1986 cards. They do have the master symbols on them again. 
but uh, how these come into play, I'm not 100% sure of. I was hoping my good friend Ken Castro or one of the other APVA guys would stop by. Because then I come across some, some real weird stuff. So this is, uh, this is an old set. You can tell by the, the cards. They're real old. And uh, you can tell they're kind of faded a little bit. And they're not even the same size as the other cards. And not only that, but they don't even tell you what season year it is. Look at that. It's a little weird. Right? There's nowhere on the card that tells you what season it's from. That I can see. Am I missing something? Am I missing something? I know this is an older set, right? And it's, uh, I think it's the, uh, let me look at my email from the guy I emailed about all this. It was the 1982 originals with extra players and master symbols included, which makes sense because I, they come with these extra sheets here that have all the different players and lineups and stuff, blah, blah, blah. And this thing, but then there's this like ancient, like uh, fold out little thing that has all kinds of master symbols written on here. But I'm not sure how all that comes into play yet until I figure this all out. So, 81 set and 80, let's see, what did I get? 82 set and 83 set. 81 and 82 set. Interesting though that they don't even have uh, they don't even have the year on on it anywhere. This has got a J4 down in the corner. This has got a J2. This is 42 hit by pitch. Originally they would have come in a season specific envelope. All right. I mean, the guy that I bought them from has them all separated, you know, in different bags, which is nice. So it's just weird that they wouldn't have, like, is this the 82 set or the 83 set? Good Lord. Why wouldn't they even put that on the cards? And you can tell some of these have been, you know, extra perforated sheets that they mailed out. So it did, did, did come with the extra players, which is kind of nice. Probably won't be using these until I... Uh, figure everything out but um, it did come with the master set bo boards I guess with all the master ratings on there okay mm all kinds of different cool information uh, but like I said probably won't be messing with this stuff until my good friends show up and show me how to use them. That's for sure. Let's put these extra 156 players. You can get them for $4. Postage paid. <laughs> That's pretty cheap back in the day, huh? You can't get them for $4 anymore, right? But it's kind of cool that they do have the master, um, the master uh, information at least. So that's cool. All right. So that's and uh, let's see if I can stretch all the way back and grab this last bag of goodies. What's in this bag? Uh, yeah, it looks like. Uh, Another old set. This must be their. This is either the 81 or the 82 set. I don't know. Wish it would have said. Hmm. Not good quality. I mean, from the. Looks like the guy never used them or played them very much, so that's nice. <laughs> Wish they would have. Uh... So, yeah. Probably, probably won't be using these sets for a little while. I like my 70s set and 86 set. 
fast. Outfielder one, nine, two. First base a two. PL. Now let's see if I can remember what that is. Um, game play is pretty simple. You set your lineup and roll the dice for each better. Read the red is the tens. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. I play. Uh, I play a lot of um, uh, Mad Dog. You might be interested in this since you're used to playing it. But there's National Pastime Next Generation Plus, which is an offshoot of APBA. Uh, very similar system. They do things slightly different. But uh, you can go to the National Pastime Next Generation Plus website, download season files you can print them out uh they didn't even have an excel sheet that you can use to play the um the different seasons i've done some videos on these you might want to check these out and uh yeah maybe you'll get back into it hey what's going on my good friend al red sox fan what's going on a eh? what's going on hopefully all is well with my good friend al red sox fan what do you know, buddy? What do you know? I appreciate you thinking about me the other night. I did see your video uh, from Saturday night, so appreciate the shout out. Just wanted you to know I was, uh, I didn't, I wasn't uh, around for the live stream, but I did watch it afterwards. So I appreciate the shout out, my good friend, Al Red Sox fan. So yeah, I'm just trying to figure this all out here. I don't uh, don't quite understand what all the different meanings are at this point yet. I was kind of hoping an APBA guy would show up, Ken Castro or APBA. Uh, uh, what's his What's his uh, What's his name? Uh, APBA something. I forget. I'm sorry. I, I always forget things. I know this number down here at the bottom represents the way they bat. And it's added to or subtracted from the pitching grade. So, uh, it's added if it's a minus. So if it's a minus two, they, you add that to the pitcher's grade. But I'm not sure what the what is the pitcher's grade. Is that the last number on the card, or is it this number down here in parentheses? Let's get out a couple pitchers here. Probably figure out half of this stuff. I don't know. It doesn't you know APBA isn't that hard to begin with? APBA chatter. That's right. Thank you, Al. Thank you. Uh, so let's oh let's get back over here, Mr. Card. So let's look at these. Uh, let's look at these nice cards here. So we have wild, this is a wild pitch rating. We know what that is. STN. Don't know what that is. SP10. MF plus one. Quality one. Great B pitcher, two Y. I know Y Z come into play on some of the different uh, charts. Okay, if we look at our again, this is the Palmarino boards. Uh, you know, it'll say X, then it'll be a strikeout. You know, or Y, it's a strikeout. So I know what the X, Y, and Z represent. So that's not that hard. I'm just not sure. If two is like its defensive rating and 30 is his something else. Uh, Mad Dog says the master rules added a lot of additional stuff that I don't remember. All right. Well, I appreciate you at you least know, thinking. <laughs> if, you can, if you remember something, let me know. Uh, this, I think this SA is um, it's, uh, whether they're a pull hitter or a standard hitter. And then plus or minus versus the pitcher rating. I'm not sure what this 14 is. It's only on the pitcher cards, so that's interesting. Let's look at a couple more pitcher cards. Like I said, I don't, 
I know APBA isn't that difficult. It's just trying to figure out what all the numbers are represent. This guy's got a 12 with the star. That's a one with the star. 14. Uh, 10. 10. Yeah, and only pitchers have that number there. I don't know what that represents. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Oh, Mike Hill. Mike Hill. Hey, Mike. How you doing? He's going to give me some info here. Good. All right. So, all right. Let's look at this. Come here. All right. So, two is his defensive rating. All right. Cool. Y, Z, and all the letters represent different things they're good or not good at. Strikeouts. Uh, and then the 30 is his endurance. Okay. That's how many, that's how many batters he can face. Cool. Thanks, Mike. What um, what does the grade represent? B, how does that come into play? Because I don't I don't see that on my like my different charts. I do see this fielding option fielding three is thirty six or less. Fielding two thirty seven to forty one. Fielding one is forty two or more, and then each different position has a number like catcher five six catcher seven or catcher eight nine so let's look at our catcher here let's take a look at our catcher who's our catcher Echebaron. he's going to be at the bottom here's our catcher he's a seven okay so he's going to be a fielding two i think and, uh, see i'm already starting to figure this out Basic rules use a letter grade. All right, so we can ignore that because I'm not using basic rules. Cool. All right, so Edson Baron, if I'm not, if I'm already, thanks to you guys, figuring half of this stuff out. Uh, so he says catcher seven. So it says here on fielding two, C7 would be a fielding two. So if it goes to the catcher, I'm probably going to be looking in on the column two plays. If it's uh, if it's needed, I think is what that represents. All right, so uh, so yeah, each of the different positions has a different number. So where is the pitcher grade? Is that this number down at the bottom, down here in the corner, down here? 14 is that what that is is that the pitcher grade and then this is the adjustment on the batters and they're batting against left-handed or right-handed i know that number in parentheses at bottom is pitcher grade i oh, see that i see i tell you i'm a genius all right, so we figured that out. So that's his pitching grade, so 14. So let's say Don McCallie here is pitching for Baltimore, right? And he is a left-hander. He's a left-hander. So if, let's just pick up the first guy here. Theodore Henry Ted Ford is, pit, is batting against the lefty. He's a minus one. So minus one is going to add one to his grade, so he'd be a 15. So if we have to look at the chart, right, instead of looking under the 14 column, right, we look under the 15 column. Tabletop Baseball Plus says yes. Well, I am a genius then. I swear, I am a genius. So that uh, 14 going to a 15 would change. All right, so what is this? All right, so the 14 goes to a 15. Let's say we hit a, what is this, a 2, right? What does the H represent, and what's a GH? Some of these have GHs on them, and some have Hs on them. H means home run, maybe? GH. I don't know what the GH would be then. GH. 
ID just are super genius. <laughs> if pitcher has that grade, so the G and the H would be a They'd be like a letter here, like a G and an H would be here. So if we look at uh, McDowell here, come on, McDowell. All right, he's a uh, 1X. He also looked like he played first base, second base as well. All right, so he's a 14. And he throws the left. What's this guy? This guy is a, uh, he's a lefty and he's also 14. Oh, how convenient. Oh, I missed what you said. Sorry. Uh, turns home runs into doubles. If pitcher has that grade. Okay. I see. All right. So let's look through. So he's a Y. He's a Y and a Z. He's a Y and a Z. He's an X. So he would have the Y double Z, Y Z. Mm, X, W. Kincher, 2Y, and XY. It would be at the top. Yeah, you're talking about up up, up, up here at the top, right? Uh, up here in, in like these letter grades, right? So it'd have a G or an H up here, or it'd have both a GH. So I haven't, I haven't come across anyone that's a GH yet. That's why I was just wondering to make sure. Here's a Y pitcher. Uh, y and a W, Y. I've seen a lot of Ys and Ws and Xs. Y and a W, X and a W, X and a Y, X, X, Y. All right, you know what? Probably the best thing to do is just a freaking play, right? And, uh, right? And then we'll go through some plays and we'll figure this out as we play, right? Oh, no, tippy top. Oh, tippy top, tippy top. All right, so, yeah, let's, let's, let's start up at the tippy top. Ah. Come on, focus in. Come on, come on, you can do it. Thanks, guys, for your help. I appreciate it, by the way. I, I don't know if I mentioned that, but it's good to be back. So we have STNSP7AR32. I have no idea what any of that is. STN SP7 AR32. We know the wild pitch number. I got that. And that's his bulk number. We got that. MF plus three. That must be like his hold reading. I agree. Play and learn says Al. Yeah, we're going to do that. I just want to figure out what these... MF plus three. And every card will have a G or an H. Yeah, I kind of figured that because I didn't see any. Q, zero, I don't know what that is. MF plus three, and I don't know what all that is. AR32, SP7, STN. No steel. Oh, steel. Oh, okay. So this is 
Steel, no. So he can't steal. Uh, speed is 7. Okay. Arm is 32. Wild pitch is 3. Balk is 0. Move to first plus 3. Ah. Moved, uh, Mike is also saying move. All right, well let's let's uh, let's roll it. Let's go. Here's the lineups. We're doing a game from 1970. That's right, 1970. Uh, I'll go through it kind of slow in the beginning, for, so you guys can help me out. It's the Baltimore Orioles taking on the Cleveland Indians. Look at these cards, though. Look at how. I mean, these are like brand new cards. I got these pretty good deal from a guy that was selling a bunch of stuff. I got the 1970 set. I got the 1986 set. Uh, everything with the master card editions on them and I know a lot of people just joined me so I'm going to show you this again so if you already saw this I'm sorry I'll just go through it really quickly for everyone else I got a couple older sets as well this is the 1982 or 81 and 82 seasons with the old cards you can tell they're old because they're all kind of faded and they kind of have that yellowish tint to them. They don't even have a year. They don't even have a year on them, what year the card is was made. But the cool thing that it comes with is like this little index board that has all of the, let's see if it's not two-sided, but um, that has all the master rating symbols on everything. So once I play a few games, maybe I'll be able to figure out what all this stuff means. But uh, cool. So, okay. All right. So we'll get to that. We'll get to that. All right. Let's, uh, I bet you this, this, you know, being familiar with National Pastime Next Generation Plus, I think it's going to be pretty easy to figure out most of this stuff anyways. Hey, thanks, Al. Remember to hit that like button, guys. Greatly appreciate it. That would be awesome. Uh, tabletop Baseball has got to run, but I do appreciate all your help. All right, so we got uh, lineups here. Let's look at the lineups. We got, <clears throat> we got Don Buford in the left field. We have uh, Mark Bellinger. He's at short. We have Frank Robinson. He's in right field. We have Boog Powell. He's at first base. We have Paul Blair in center field. We have Brooks Robinson. He's going to be at third. We have David Johnson. He's going to be at second. Etchen Barron is the catcher. And then pitching is going to be Dave McNally. All right. And Dave, let's look at Dave because we're going to need to know all of his information, right? All right. So he is a lefty. He's a Y, a Z, a two range. He can face 30 batters. We figured all that out. That was great. Uh, and then he's got a, a pitcher rating of 14. Awesome. Awesome. Let's look at the Cleveland Indians. Go tribe, eh? All right. So we got uh, Ford, Theodore Henry, Ted Ford. He's going to be in right field. We have Theodore Otto Ted Ulander. Good Lord. He's in center field. We got Roy Jr. Foster. He's in left field. We got Anthony Darren Holt Horton. Horton. Horton's going to be at first base. Raymond Fossey is going to be catching. Jack Heidelman, shortstop. Craig Nettles is going to be third base. Eduardo Leon is a second. And then pitching, oops, got this all out of whack. Sorry, guys. Uh, is going to be, who's pitching for Cleveland? Here he is. It's going to be uh, Sam McDowell. He's an X. Uh, let's see, what else do we need to know? He's a lefty. He's a 14, and, uh, well, uh, sure, whatever. All right, here we go. Let's try this out here, right? So, Buford versus McDowell. So, bats, he's going to bat, uh, yeah, he's going to bat both sides, but it doesn't matter, right? So, you got a 45, 45. So, 45 is a 14, right? 
45 is a 14. That's going to be a walk. Uh, all right. So, all right. So, it's going to be. Fourteen. It's gonna be. It looks like it's a base on balls, and that's the pitcher as it's easy two balls. But how do I know? How do I know? Because if you look at fielding here, there is no column for the pitcher. I don't know which column to use for the pitchers, right? So, how do you know which column to use for the pitcher, right? Drive fans here. 1970, these players are all too familiar. Sadly, Chambliss doesn't make his debut until 1971. Arnold, how you doing? Thanks, everyone, for coming on out and helping me out with this. Uh, so how do I know if I roll 14, base is empty, right? Base is empty, I roll 14. How do I know which column, which fielding column to use for the pitcher, right? Is there a fielding three, there's a fielding two, and there's a fielding one. So add up their fielding amounts. Really? That's for the pitchers? Okay. For a walk? Really? Okay. All right, so let's do that. So they're fielding one. Three is four, five, six, seven, eight, and eight is sixteen, and eight is twenty four, and four, um, god damn, start again. I've got to thinking, they got to stop thinking. My brain's always thinking about things. <laughs> Right, these are the these are the Indians, right? These are the Indians, Cleveland. See, here's Cleveland. So Ford is a one. And ooh, Allender is a three, so that's four. And he's a one, that's a five. And he is a three, that's eight. Wait, one, one, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so that's eight. And then catcher's eight, so that's 16. And the shortstop's an eight, so that's 24. Third base is a four. Oh, good Lord. All right, I'm gonna have to write these down because I'm an idiot. I keep losing track. He's a one. He's a three. He's a one. He's a three. He's an eight. He's an eight. He's a four. And second baseman is a seven. Now, do you add the do you add the do you add the pitchers one in there as well, or just the Cleveland Indians? So that's uh, that gives a total of let's see, sixteen twenty. 30, 33, 34, 30. I guess it's a total of 35 without the pitcher. So 35 is 35 is a total. Uh, we'll do the same thing for these guys up here for Baltimore here. So he's a one. He's a nine. He's a two. He's a four. He is a three. He's a six. He's an eight. He's a seven. So 
So if we add all those up, that's 10, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 25, 35. They got a total of 40 without the pitcher. Okay, so, hello, Thomas, how you doing? All right, so, uh, yes, add, oh, you do add the pitchers. Okay, so, uh, let's see, McDowell adds one to Cleveland, so they're a 36. And McNally is a two, so Baltimore is a 42. All right, so, the, so with Cleveland, we have a total of 36, counting the pitcher. So 36 or less. So we're at fielding three. We rolled a 14, so that's a base on balls, and that's the pitcher has ZZ. Then it's two balls. Since this is blank, I'm assuming you refer back over to here, though. So it doesn't really matter. Everyone is the same way. I think is the way I'm reading that, right? So if it doesn't really matter because 14... Based on balls, ZZ is two balls. So unless the, unless the pitcher has two Zs, it's going to be a walk because it, the other two columns are blank. So I'm assuming when they're blank, you refer back to the first column. Is that is that pretty accurately done? All right, so we're going we're gonna to assume that's a walk. All right, so... Now, I know there's built-in stealing, so you don't have to do it yourself, right? It, can you do it yourself, or can you only just do it through the game system? Like, if, I, if uh, let's see, Buford just got on. He just walked, right? Everyone kind of agrees. It's just a walk. No, no fielding check. All right. So, Buford walks. I don't see any like steel rating or anything like that. So I'm just assuming you use the built in, uh, built into the system. You can't call like your own steals or anything like that. Is that, is that correct, Amundo? All right. I think we got our first play down. I'm just uh, verifying everything from you guys. So appreciate it. All right. So Mark Ballinger, the blade. Oh, let's smack a homer with that like button, says Al. All right, let's do that. Let's roll 46 again. So 46 is a 29. So we got to go to the runner first base. 29. Okay, here comes our first. All right, so. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can zoom in on this here. So 29 with runner first says INF. So not sure. I'm assuming that means 29 INF. It's ground out. Mike's got to go, but thanks for your help, Mike. Appreciate it. Uh, so, 29 INF. Is that where you use your total to find out which column you're using? Fielding three, fielding two, or fielding one? Using everyone, is that what the INF is? I'm assuming, maybe. From Pittsfield, Massachusetts, the Boyd Mark Bellinger. <laughs> thanks, Al. Take care, Mike. Appreciate you helping. So I'm just trying to figure out what the 29 INF, because it doesn't go to a certain position, right? So we have to figure out, is it a ground out to the pitcher? Is it a fielder's choice? Or is it a ground out runner moves to second? But we have to do that based upon our columns. And I'm assuming since it's INF, that's where you're going to look at your total fielding 36 or less 37 to 41 or 42 or more that's the fielding ring All right ah see i'm yeah i just need some verification that i'm doing it right so with cleveland their fielding is only 26 so they're going to use the, the shitty column 
And the 29 says, if we can get it to focus again, that would be awesome. Super cool. Yay. Come on. I got this down. I think this is, it's just a matter of verifying with people that have done it before. Oh my gosh, seriously, if you'd like to zoom in sometime today, that'd be awesome. Great. All right, so column one is going to be ground out, pitcher to first, runner moves to second. If he has a Y grade, it's going to be a strikeout. So, McDowell here, and I keep moving my sheet way over here. McDowell, the pitcher, he's got an X grade, but no Y grade. So, it's going to be a fielder's choice on the one... Uh, it's going to be a runner's going to move to second on the fielder's choice. One, three. All right. We are cruising right along. <laughs> we got through two batters. Ah, it'll go much faster. All right. It brings up big old Frank Robinson. F Robbie. Outfielder. That's a 64. That is a 14. Again, that is going to be a walk. So Frank Robinson is going to walk. We all know that. We've done this a million times already. Interesting enough, Frank Robinson, he's only got a single column card, not a dual column card. All right, that brings up Boog Powell. I'm pretty sure I did that right, so we're going to move on. If I did something wrong, say, hey, wait a minute, knucklehead, hold up. Boog Powell, uh-oh, 3-3. Three, three. So 3-3. Three, three. For Boog Pal. Come on, zoom in. You can do it. 3-3. Three, three. Hey, come on, you can do it. God damn it. There we go. 33 is a zero. So just like National Pastime Next Generation Plus, instead of an H result, zero must be roll on the second column. So that's what we're going to do. Roll on the second column, right? Instead of using H's, though, they use zeros, I bet. A roll to 66. That is going to be a 1. And that, my friends, is going to be interesting. All right, so let's look at our chart here now, right? So Boog Bell... Uh, I bet you don't adjust these on the second column, though, do you? That's going to be gone. I don't think you make any adjustments on the second run on the second column. These are probably just first column results. If it's a because that would be a one and a fifteen, which is an H. He doesn't have an H anyways, but that is gone. That's what I thought. Mad Dog is in, in total agreement with me. And Boog Pal steps up and says, I'll hit one out of the park and make things real easy for you, ID Jester. You just fill in the blanks. That is a three-run home run for John Wesley Boog Pal. 33-0-6-6 is a one. That is gone. That's my impression. All right, let's bring up Paul Blair. If I'm doing something wrong, let me know, guys. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep going because I think we most of this stuff I figured out. I guess my I guess my only question is on the second column, do you make any adjustments, right? Because it could matter. Because you can see here on a one. Hello, let's see. There's a home run, right? One. We scoot over to fifteen. He's a 14. Oh, actually, Boog Pal is. Oh, wait a minute. Where's the left hander? He's a minus five, so it's going to add five. So he's going to go from a 14 to a 19. A 19 is an H, right? A 19 is an H on here. Hey, Dave Little, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming by. Appreciate it, man. But I still think, uh, I think that's right. All right, so Paul Blair steps in. Three-run home run by Boog Powell gives the Orioles a 
big blast in the first. 15. 15 is an 11. Okay, so he is a, against the left-hander, he's a plus 2, which is going to, uh, according to my master rules addendum, right? Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. The number before the slash is added. The left-handed numbers are subtracted from the pitcher grade in, if it's a plus. So it's added if it's a minus. It's subtracted if it's a plus. Now, why would they do that is unknown to me, but it's it's the exact opposite. So plus two really means to subtract two from the pitcher grade. So an 11, 11, oh, wait. We have, uh, what do we have? We have bases empty. Let's go back to that chart. That'd be good. We have an 11. Yeah, it's not going to matter. It doesn't matter if it adjusts up or down unless you go really, really high. Right? So it's going to be a single. So Paul Blair gets a single. And McDowell not faring very well here in the top of the first inning here. Brooks Robinson's up. Yes, there is. There is a there is a board for each space running situation. I just have them all stacked over here to the side. So Brooks Robinson. Oh kid okay. It's oh he hit a one one, which is a zero, which means we're gonna roll again on the second column. I see 35. 35 is a one with a runner on first. Brooks Robinson is a plus four. Uh, a plus helps the batter and minus hurts him. So plus. Subtracted from the pitcher grade. So he would subtract five, or Brooks Robinson would subtract four versus the left hander. He's a 14, so that'd drop him down to a 10. And if he had a G or H, but again, I don't, he doesn't have anything, but I think that, my friends, it's another home run. Holy cow, and this game is getting out of hand like right off the bat. Wow, it is now a five nothing. Orioles in the top of the first inning. There's still only one out. I brings up David Johnson. Someone get to the pen quick. This <laughs> mad dog. <laughs> That's it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. That's crazy. 43 is a 29. 29. Now we we know what this one is because we already had this one, right? 29. Is that infield check? So we look look at our combination of all the players. It's going to be a column one. It's a ground out. Uh, no, wait. We have no one on base again. God damn it. Let's try this one. There we go. It's a ground out. Unless he's got an X. He does have an X. So it's a strikeout. So Sam McDowell with the strikeout finally gets to see something go right for him. And brings up Etchenbaring. 6-3 is a 13, and I believe that is going to be a strikeout. So back-to-back -back strikeouts ends the innings, but that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 runs by Baltimore in the first inning. 1, 2, 3, three only 3 hits, 2 walks, definitely hurt. So Edson Barron is out. And that brings up Cleveland's first time here in the 1970 seasons. I'm planning on doing a, an APBA replay, either 86 or 70, since they have the master card symbols already to go. Someone turned the sprinklers on by mistake by the lake. Ugh, it's, it's getting ugly. It's getting ugly. Let's see if, uh, no. Baltimore is a 42, so they're going to be on the highest column you can get. So let's see if Cleveland can make a little bit of uh, Dave McNally here. I know that name. Oh, 55. 55 is a 9. 
So he's a 14 and also throws left. So he's a minus one. So it takes him up to a 15, actually. A nine and a 15. Nine and a 15 is still a 15. It's still a single. So it's going to be a leadoff single for Cleveland. And the hometown crowd gives out a Bronx cheer for that. Yay. Theodore Olander. Olander. We'll just call him Ted. Let's, should we just call him Ted? Right? Theodore Otto Ted Leander. I'll just call him Ted. All right. So we do have a runner on first. So we need that chart out. Boom. 21 is a 30. 30. It's a fly out to left. So that's going to be an F7. Oh, yeah. We got this game. I already figured this game out. This Master Edition stuff. Yeah, we already got it figured out. New pitcher got the first batter out. Fire the pitching coach. <laughs> That's it. Ulander. Roy Foster. 4-3. Is a 29. Runner in first. Oh, boy. Here we go. So runner in first. At a 29. And they use the column over here. It's a ground out. 1-3, runner moves to second, and this, the pitcher, is a Y, He's, and he does have a Y, so it'll be a strikeout by McNally. So, two away for Anthony Horton. 34, 31, 31 is a fly to center, unless he's got a K, nope. So, it's going to be an F, what did I say, F8. So that is one hit, no runs, no errors, and Cleveland goes down. And out comes Dave McNally, the bat. He's here in the top of the second inning. Don't see that very often. Batter, pitcher batting in the top of the second. 4-4. Four, four. Of course he got a 4-4. Four, four. That is a 9. Oh, back to our regular chart. He is actually a minus zero versus lefties, so it's going to stay a nine, and on the nine column, the pitcher is a 14, so it's going to stay a 14. Nine and a 14 stays a 14, so a single for <laughs> McNally. So everything's going right if you are a Baltimore Orioles fan in 1970. Thomas, how you doing? Maybe the coach is saving the bullpen. Maybe. <laughs> uh, must be, since this is the first game of the season. 2-3. 27. Uh, bases? No, we got a runner first. 27. Runner first. It's ground out. 5-3. Runner moves to second. X strikeout. He does have an X, though, so... It will be a strikeout for McDowell. McDowell with the big strikeout. Yeah, I'm learning a lot from you guys, so I appreciate all the help everyone has given me. Uh, I've got the charts over here. Uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, 2 3, what did he roll? He rolled a 27. I'm just going to show you here for anyone else out there. 27. It's going to third base, uh, but you see it says. X strikeout there by my thumb. So it was a strikeout. All right. So that was Buford. That brings up Bellinger. 4-3 is a 29. Hey, we're getting pretty good at this. We remember these numbers now. And that's not a strikeout. That's going to be a 1-3 put out. 1-3. And the runner's moving to second. So two-way for Frank Robinson, who walked his first time up. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah, no. Say it isn't so. That is a runner on first. And that one is another home run by the Baltimore Orioles. It is just craziness here in Cleveland, Ohio. 
to start the season. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong for the Indians. And everything has gone right for the powerhouse Baltimore Orioles. 14. This time he's going to walk. That brings up Paul Boyer. Oh, Jesus. 33 is a 6. So he is going to be a 6 and a 12. 6 and a 12 is an M, actually. Ooh, this is an interesting one. So we have a runner on first. You can see the chart. Oh, no, I got the wrong damn chart. Sorry. 6 and a 12 is a blank. So it's still going to be a double. Uh, runner goes to third. F scores. Is he a fast runner? Boog. Pow, everyone say it. Boog, pow. He is a slow runner, actually. So six is going to be a double. Runner moves to third. If there's two outs, there is two outs, actually. There is a strikeout and a ground out. So he will score. Boog, pow, will score on the double. Paul Boyer. That brings up Brooks Robinson, who first time up hit a home run. Six and a one. That's a 24. We have a runner at second this time. Tribe fan. Anything can go wrong will continue to go wrong for the Indians. Indians and Orioles, 1970s style. I'm sorry, Tribe fan. I really am, man. I am I was rooting for the Indians, actually. I was going to try and give them a, an upset win here to start the season. And uh, 61 is a 24. It's a pop fly. Uh, he does not have a K, so we don't have to worry about that. It's a pop fly to short, so we're going to call that a P6. But that is a one, two, three more runs. It is eight nothing Baltimore. Ugh. Well, we won't be playing much longer. <laughs> this is just a test game to figure everything out, to get the information, to try and uh, understand what all the little numbers and symbols and everything means. We'll play a couple more innings. We'll see if Cleveland maybe can come back here. Raymond Fossey's coming up. It's not my fault they stunk the high heavens all the time. <laughs> uh, it could be the upset. Now, you watch. They're going to come back and win this because you never know. 56. 56 is 34. 34 is a strikeout because he's got the Y, so that'll be a strikeout. That brings up Jack Heidemann, Heidelman, Heidemann, Heidelman, something like that. That is a 16 to 28. I think we just had that. Nope, it's a ground out. He does not have a K, so it's not a strikeout, but it is a 6-3 put out to shortstop. That's going to be Ballinger. Brings up Craig Puff Nettles. 23. That's a 26. That's going to be grounder to second. That's going to be a 4-3 put out. It's a 1-2-3 inning. Poor Indians can't get anything to go for them. They haven't even gone through the batting order once. And Baltimore's almost gone through it three times already. David Johnson, I would, you know, probably bring in a pinch hitter or a new pitcher. Uh, uh, but, you know, this is just a test game anyways. But we'll throw on a new pitcher. What the hell? So I'm assuming you want a pitcher with a higher grade. It seems like that gives a better... Ugh. So, who uh, score is eight to nothing Baltimore? We're in the top of the third inning. So, another question for you APBA guys out there: four, and then it has a six in parentheses with a star. I'm assuming this must be like if he starts, he's a starter. 
He's a four, and if he comes in and relieves, he's a six. I'm assuming. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm just trying to figure out why there would be two numbers there. He's an eleven with a star. What's a star? I think the star means they throw left-handed. Yes. Yeah, see, I'm a genius. I figured that out. I figured that out, right? All the ones with the stars, I think, are throw lefty. Yep. And the ones without the stars, throw right-handed. Ah, see, you guys can learn something from me yet. Like Cleveland doesn't have very many, uh, well, really, really good pitchers, to be honest. Uh, I got a four, a six, a 12. We can bring in Steve Hargan. Hate to waste another starting pitcher, but Philip Hennigan. He said, yeah, we'll bring in Philip. Let's bring in Philip. Why not? We'll just try what a new we'll look at what a new pitcher does. So he's um he's an eight, I think, in the parentheses. Uh, put in a grade D. What does that mean? Put in a grade D. Oh, like the grade up here. Okay, that's what I did by accident. He's a grade D. Is a grade? Does that tell you how how much they uh, like how many innings they can pitch or something? Because he can face 19 guys, right? So he can face 19. So he must be like a long reliever anyway. So I did a good. I think I did good making a choice for a backup pitcher from 1970 that I never heard of. Hennigan's coming in. Sure, we'll give Hennigan a shot at stardom here. Let's see if he can shut down the Baltimore. <laughs> All right, David Johnson. He struck out his first time up. 4-3. 43 is a 29. Hey, look at that. 29 is a ground out. Does he have an X? No, he does not. So it's a 1-3 put out. That's a Baron. 21 is 13. Strike him out. And the pitcher spot. Dave McNally. Look at his cruise now. Uh-oh, 33 is an 8. He's an 8. He's an 8. Reliever. He is a right-hander. So he's actually going to take him up to a 10. An 8 and... What did he roll? God damn it, what did he roll? He rolled an eight, right. And the pitcher goes two for two with two singles. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tribe fan. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. To use their starting grade. All right. 54, 32, runner at first. Fly out to right. So they get through the inning. Look at them go. That's an F9. No runs. Only one hit. Let's see how many hits they had. Uh, one, two, three hits there. All right. There we go. I think this game is going to be really fast. Uh, I see this. I see how you can just cruise right through this really quickly. Leon, the second baseman. Finally gets in a bat. He rolls a 33. That's a 7. I guess the lefty, he's a minus 3, though. So it's going to take him from 14 to 17. And he rolled a 7. 7 is 17. Ooh, not quite high enough. Look at that. That's just... Oh, that was runner at first again. Why do I keep looking at the runner at first? Seven is going to be a seven no matter what. And that's a really, really good pitcher. So that's going to be a single. Yay. All right, that brings up Philip Hennigan. All right, so how do you bunt? I don't think there's like a bunt chart. Right? Is there a bunt chart? Let me look through here and see if there's a bunt chart. Base is full. 
pitcher's grade reduction, stealing chance table. I don't, I don't see that. I'm trying as well for the Twins. Top eighth in final game in August. So how do, how do I steal with the, or how do I bunt with the pitcher up now? Let's see. Uh, oh, here he is. Phil Winston Hannigan. Is there, uh, that's a good question. How do you steal, how do you uh, bunt? Is there, there, I don't see like a special bunt chart. Good question. Ah, see? I'm full of good questions. There's bases empty. Runner first, runner second, runner third, first and second. How come I don't have a first and third sheet? And base is full. And then pitcher grade reduction and relief pitchers. And then a stealing chance table. I didn't see anything for bunning. Trying to sacrifice. Yes, I'm trying to sacrifice with the pitcher. Down seven runs. Eight runs, sorry. Eight runs down. Do 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 do. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Eight nothing. Yes, it's eight nothing. Eight nothing Baltimore. Five in the first, three in the second, nothing in the third. I don't have I don't have any I, I don't know how to do bunts so I don't see any charge for bunting so I guess he's just gonna have to swing away because no I don't know I don't see anything yeah it's eight nothing bolt right here's the score five three zero no problem Thomas appreciate you coming on by but I still don't know how to bunt. So, I guess Hannigan will swing away. Let's see what happens. Uh, we do have a runner on first, so we'll use that chart for change. All right, uh, what do we roll? 34. That's a pop out to shore, short, unless he. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He is hitting, he is pitching, right. So the 34 is a 31. 31 is a fly out to center. If he has a K result, which he doesn't, it's a strikeout, so it's just a fly out to center. F8. All right. So that brings up the top of the lineup. One on, one out for Theodore Ford. Come on, Theodore. 4-3-29. Oh, that's not a good number. That's ground out. One, three, nope, it's a strikeout because he's got a Y, so two away. And Olander, Olander. You don't have the original boards? No, I don't have the original boards. Oh, another 33. That is going to be a hit. What kind of hit is it? I'm going to order him. I just, um, I just haven't had the chance I'm gonna order I'm gonna order I'm gonna order some stuff from APBA and I just needed to put my order together so I just need to get that done Ulander uh, 62 is a six with a runner on first six uh, McNally is a 14. Oh, good Lord. He's a minus 10, which is going to take him up to a 24. Uh, this is not going to end up well, is it? Oh, it actually ended up okay. 
So 24 is still a blank. Still a blank. So it's still a double. Runner goes to third. F runner scores. Or if there's two outs, there is two outs. So the runner is going to score all the way from first. Hustling around is Leon on the double by Theodore Ted Ulander. And the Indians are on the board. Here they come, Tri fans. Here they come. Tempted to pick this up for old time's sake, says Mad Dog. You should pick it up and play, man. Pick it up and start playing it. Uh, I also told you about National Pastime Next Generation Plus. I'm actually going to uh, flip over to my desktop so I can help out my good friend here, Theodore. Or, I'm sorry, Mad Dog. Uh, if you go to National, Na National Pastime Next Generation Plus, right? If you have a way to print out cards, they are uh, very similar to APBA in how they do things. They have uh, some different boards, some different charts and stuff. Uh, but uh, as you can see here, if we would just look at uh, one of the season files here, you can download all this stuff for free. All right, and uh, you can see if you got a way to print these out uh, at home or take them to Kinko's or whatever and print them out and get some uh, cardstock paper, you cut them out and, you know, very similar. Uh, this is more what I'm used to playing, but it tells you, you know, all the information. Here's your, uh, um, your speed. This is your error or your, yeah, your range. Error chance in your range. Uh, and then each pitcher is rated versus left-handers and versus right-handers. So there is a lefty-righty split and, uh, you know, all that information is on there, on the card. Uh, they actually have stealing built into the system just like APBA, but it also has, um, it also has uh, where you can choose your own um, steals. So uh, it's very good. It's what I'm used to playing. So uh, it's nice to have options, especially free options. So, all right, so Indians are on the board. Let's see board. Let's see what Roy Foster, Roy, 45, 14. He's gonna walk. He's only got one Z. Doesn't have two Zs. So he's gonna walk. So the Indians have runners at first and second, and Anthony Horton could make things interesting, Anthony. Come on, Anthony. We need a 6-6 six, six from you, buddy. Oh, 6-3. <laughs> Close. The runners are first and second now, and we rolled a 63, which is a 30, and that's probably not going to be good. That's a fly out to left. F seven and that's going to do it they're going to leave two stranded but the indians put one on the board and the comeback has started <laughs> all right let's see uh we're in the top of the fourth already bellinger against philip when again hennigan <laughs> 44 44 is a nine. He's a right-hander, so he's actually a minus four versus right-handers. So it's going to add four to his eight. That's going to be a 12, and a nine and a 12. A nine. Oh, whoa. Oh, well, we're on the wrong board again. God damn it. A nine and a 12. Oh, this could be interesting. Wait a minute. This might actually change something. This might be our first change here. So, Hannigan is an 8. Bellinger is a minus 4, which actually adds 4 to the pitcher value. So, 8 goes to 12. And he rolled a 9. And if we look at 9, and a 12 goes to a 27. So, instead of a single... It's going to be a ground out to the third baseman, unless he's got an X, which he doesn't. 
So it's going to be a ground out instead of a single. The tide is turned. Whoa, ho, ho. It's going to be a 5-3 put out. Congratulations there. Bellinger almost got a single. Good play by the third baseman over there. That's Craig Nettles. All right, Al, we'll see you, buddy. Thanks for coming on by. I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you very much. I'm about I'm about going to be done here after one more inning. I think I'm going to play a little bit offline just to see if I have any more questions. And uh, so Frank Robinson, he walked in home run so far. <laughs> and he rolled the 2-2. Two -two. Ah, that's going to be a 7. That's going to be a single. So Frank Robinson's 3-for-3. Three three. I haven't had any steals yet, so... Boog Powell, he's home run and walk, so he's 2-for-2. Two two. 35. And we have a runner first. That is a 35. Is a 37. 37 is runner is picked off first. What? Look at that. So we had a uh, runner first. Where is it? Here it is. Runner first. Make sure I'm at the right. We have a runner first. He rolled a 35, which was a 37 on Book Powell's card. 37 says runner picked off first. 1 3. Boom. So picked off the first. So he's going to be a 1-3 victim. And look, I'm telling you, the tide is turned. All these people out there that have said, you know what, I'm out of here. It's 8-1, to, it's eight to one, but when the Indians come back and win this, uh, Bukpal is still up, though. All right. Fifty-six is a thirty-four. That's going to be a pop-up to short. We'll call that a P six. That's a one-two-three inning. You don't get much better than that. One-two-three inning was a hit in there, but doesn't matter. It's still one-two-three inning. I want to see if the Indians can put some more pressure on him here. Fossey. Thirty-four. It's a thirty-one. Base is empty. Thirty-one. Fly to center. F8. Heideman. 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 64 is a 13. Steve Reich. Three gold. Craig Nettles made a good play there defensively. Let's see if he can get things going offensively. 51 is a 14. Well, he'll walk. That brings up Edward. Eduardo Leon, the second baseman. Come on now. Who is pitching for Cleveland? Philip Hennigan is pitching for Cleveland. Here's the Cleveland pitcher, Philip Winston Hennigan. <clears throat> Sam McDowell started the game, but he was pulled after two innings, giving up eight runs. So, Philip Hennigan is in for Cleveland. Come on, Leon. 43, 29. We have a runner on first, 29. And that is going to be a 1-3 put out to end it. But Cleveland got a hit. They also got two hits here. But nothing across for the... Indians, Blair, Blair, single and a double so far, Paul Blair, 41 is a 24, that's going to be 6-4-3 double play, but I uh, because I'm on the wrong damn chart, right, yeah, ah, ba -ba -ba -ba. 41 is a 24, Ground out to short. Nessie's got a K. He doesn't have a K. So it's going to be a 6-3 put out. One away. Brooks Robinson is home run. And he has popped it up to short. 14 is a 30. Fly out to left. F7. 
Everything's gone Cleveland's way after the, after the second inning. Everything has been just hunky dory. Six two. 13 struck him out, so it's 1-2-3 inning. I mean, Cleveland just got shellac locked in those first two innings with that starting pitcher of theirs. Phil Hennigan, he can 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, he's, he's going to have to stay in there to bat because we need some innings out of the poor man. 43, 13 strikes him out. So that brings up the top of the lineup. Viper Dave, what's going on, my friend? How you doing? Good to see ya. What's going on, my friend? Thanks for coming by. Everyone see everything okay? Hopefully you guys can. Viper Dave's doing great. Well, that's good to hear, my friend. All right, so Theodore Ford is up. He's got a single and a strikeout. 6 1 27. Uh, and no X, so it's not a strikeout. It's gonna be a 5 3 put out, though. And that brings up Olander. Doubled last time up. Come on, buddy, do it again. 2 2. That's a 7. That's a single. Solid single. All right, Roy Foster. Come on, Roy. You can do this now. 65 is a 35. That's not going to be good. He fouls out to the catcher. Unless the pitcher has a W, that would be a walk. But he doesn't have a W. So he's going to foul out to the catcher. F2. Another hit, but no runs. No hits. Or one hit, no errors. We go to the 6. Etchenbaron. 43 is a 29. 29 is a ground out to the uh, pitcher. 1-3 on the put out. That brings up McNally. He'll probably stay in and pitch a little bit more. He can go 30 batters. He only did 18, 19, 20. He's only done 21, so he can go another inning or two. 2-4. 13 Steve Rag three called and it brings up the top of the lineup Don Buford 43 is a 29 now that should be familiar 29 is gonna be a one three yeah that's what I thought one three another ground out to the pitcher god there's a lot of ground outs of pitchers in this game but it's another one, two, three. Look at that. One, two, three inning. One, two, three inning. One, two, three inning. One, two, three, four inning. So the last one, two, three, four innings have been really good for Cleveland. Only given them one hit in that whole span. It's his first two innings that killed them. All right. Let's see if Horton can get things started here. All dressed up and no place to go. I hear you, brother. 34 is a 31. We are bases empty. 31. Fly to center. F8. Fossey. 6-1. 36. Fouls off to the catcher. F2. Jack Heideman. 6-2. 13. Struck him out. 1-2-3 inning. Boom, boom, boom. Top of seven. Ballinger. Yep, Ballinger. 53 is a 20. 20 is an error on the second baseman. So he's going to reach on the error. So that is going to be a e, E4. E4 on the second baseman. That brings up Frank Robinson. Uh, let's see, walk, home run, and a single. 31, runner at first. Fly to center. F8. I'm going through this quick now. Look at me go. I tell you. Boot pow, home run, walk, pop up to uh, short. 23 is a 26. 
Uh, it's going to be a 4 6, run around its second. So, 4 6, fielder's choice. So, Boog keeps out of the double play. Brings up Paul Blair, single, double, and a grounder to short. It's a six and a three. 63 is a 31. We have a runner on first still. 63 is, what did we say that was? 31. 31 is a fly to right. F9, and that is going to do it. We are in the stretch zone. Everyone stretch. I'm going to take a, a quick drink from our sponsor tonight, Mountain Dew. A cool, refreshing drink. We can go through these innings really quickly, too. All right, Craig Nettles. Why do I not see Craig Nettles? Because I forgot to flip over his card when he got the out. That's why. All right, Craig, come on now. Strike him out. Leon. 31, 14, he'll walk. Brings up the pitcher spot. Mm. Looks like a Probably a time to pinch hit. <sighs> mm, you know what? <sighs> Cleveland. Let's see who we have. So we have a, uh, who's pitching? It's this dude. He's a lefty. So somebody good against left-handers. Somebody with a pretty good batting average would be good. And we're going to need a new pitcher too, aren't we? Let's look for... Mike, Mike Paul. He's going to be our pitcher. Now, let's find the hitter. And come in and get us a hit. It's going to be, uh, yeah, sure. We'll put this guy out. Why not? What do we got to lose? We're going to bring in, uh, who is this? This guy is Dwayne Sims. My pen sucks. He's coming in the seventh inning. There we go. All right, Dwayne Sims. Let's see what he's made out of. 35. That is a 36. 36 is a walk. He takes a walk. 36 is a walk. So he comes in. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, we already had Leon at first, actually. So wait a minute, because we have a runner at first. 36 is a wild pitch. Runner moves to second. Wild pitch three only. Otherwise, it's a ball. So, uh. His wild pitch is a two, so it's not a wild pitch. So we get to do that all over again. Sorry about that. Guys got all excited there. 46. 13 strikes him out after that mess. All right, two way. Dwayne Sims, he'll be done. And brings up the top of the line up there. Theodore Ford. One for three with a single in the first. 24, 13, and strikes out the side. Dave McNally strikes out the side. Unbelievable. Cleveland, two, three, four, 
two, three, four, five hits so far for Cleveland. We go to the eighth. Coming in to pitch. Michael Paul. Michael Paul. He is a five reliever, I think. All right. Brooks Robinson. Home run. Popped a short. Flew out to left field. 64. 13. Struck him out. Get out of here, he says. David Johnson. Two strikeouts and a ground ball to the pitcher. 35. 14. He'll walk. All right. And we have a runner first for Echebaron. 52 is a 27. And it's a ground out 5-3. Runner moves to second. And thus he has an X. He does not have an X. So he's going to go to second on the 5-3 put out. But that brings up McNally's spot. And I think McNally will finally have to say goodnight. And we will bring in... And we're going to bring in Elrod Hedricks and pitching will be hmm. Looks like it's going to be uh, Edward Dean Watt, I think, is going to come in. So we'll put that down there. Uh, it's going to be Edward Watt. Sure. All right. L. Ron Hedricks is coming in. He's coming into the eighth inning. Two away, runner second now. 31 is a 14. He will walk with the open base there. So Hendricks is a slow runner though. But brings back the top of the lineup. Buford, walk, strikeout, fly out to right, and a ground ball to the pitcher. Two outs here in the top of the eighth inning. Eight to one. 64 is a 14. Oh, no, that's going to be trouble. Let's see. Hang on a second. 64 is a 14. We have a runner on first and second. That could be trouble. On ball, first and second. 14. Walk. Fills the bases unless he's got a Z or a double Z, but he doesn't have either of those. So he's going to walk. The base is loaded, and that's three walks in this inning. Oh, boy. But there's two way. You can still get on this. Runners, uh, bases are loaded. Top of eight, two way. Michael Paul trying to get through this mess for... Oh, he came up a 1-1. One, one. That is going to be a seven with the bases loaded. Now, this is going to be calculation time. Calculation time. All right, so he is at five. Bellinger against lefties is a plus four. So he's actually going to take him from a five to a one. He rolled a seven and a one, and that's going to stay a single. Two runs score. Other moves to second. F runner moves to third. So runner at first is Hendricks. He's a slow, so he's just going to go to second. Into score on the single. I'm sorry. Uh, Hendricks was on second. Uh, at first was Buford. Sorry, Buford is a fast runner. Buford will make it to third. Sorry about that. On the single. And coming into score will be Johnson and Hendricks. So two more runs on the single by Bellinger. And that put a little icing on the kink here. 
Frank Robinson, 52-27. What do we have? Runners at first and third now. And I don't have a first and third chart for some reason. I have a runner at first, runner at second, runner at third, runner at first and second, and base is full. So why do I not have a runners at first and third? That is a good question, isn't it? Uh, but let's see if it matters. 52 is a 27. Twenty seven is gonna be a five three put out, so it's gonna end the inning. It's not gonna matter. But they put two more runs across. Now let's see if Cleveland can do some damage against Edward Watt. We're back to bases empty here. I'm gonna have to check and see if I forgot to print out that sheet. If I didn't get that sheet, what's going on? Why didn't I get that sheet? All right, let's do this. Bottom eight, 10 to one, and due up is going to be Ulander. He's got a single and a double. Six and a four is a 13, and he's got a strikeout to go along with all that. Roy Foster, he walk, a strikeout, and a pop-up to the catcher. 61 is a 24. That is going to be. So what is only a Y? Okay, good to know. Um, what do we roll? 61, 24. 24 is a 6 3 put out. And Horton. Fly to center, fly to left, fly to center. He likes flying out. I'm going to roll that again because it rolled way off the table. 1, 2, 25, and that is going to be a 4, 3 put out. We go to the ninth, just like that. Boom. I got APBA because it's so damn quick. Woo, you can really cruise through these games. All right, Frank Robinson, you're out of there, buddy. It should be Boog Pal. Boog, three-run home run in the first inning. A walk. Scored later on with a double by Blair. Pop up to the shortstop and hit into a fielder's choice in the seventh. Top of nine, 10-1, 6-3, 32, bases empty, 32. Fly out to right, F9. Paul Blair. 51 is a 9, a solid 9. So that's a possible single. Uh, he is a lefty, so he's a plus 2. So he goes from a 5 to a 3, and that will stay a single. So a single by Blair. Brings up Brooks Robinson, home run. Popped a short, flew out to left, and struck out. 42, runner at first. 42 is a 13, which I think is going to be a strikeout. David Johnson. Oh, 1-1. One, one. David Johnson is going to get a hit. What kind of hit is it? Oh, boy. 53 is a 6. Six. It's going to be a double. It's going to be a double. A runner moves to third. F runner scores. Blair. Where's Blair? Blair is an F runner. So he is going to score on the single another run comes in I'm sorry on the double on the double Edson Baron runner in second fourteen is a thirty 
And it's flat to left, and that's going to do it. F7, but that's one run on two hits. They had one hit here. And they had, oh, we had an error here. No hits there, no hits there, and no hits there. So three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven hits for the Orioles. No errors so far. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Dean Watt trying to close this out. Boy, this game went fast, to tell you the truth. Horton. No, Horton, you're, you're done. Fossey. Raymond Fossey. 26. That's a 12. That is a 12 with bases empty. It's a ground out to first. So it's a 3U. And Jack Heideman, two strikeouts and a ground out. 35 is a 13. Well, we know what that is. That is a strike three. And Greg Nettles down in the last out. 35, and that is a 14. He's going to walk. Leon, runner at first. 35, 3 5, 36. Uh, wild pitch. He is a wild pitch. 3, it is a wild pitch. So that will be a wild pitch to get Nettles to second. Come on. Oh, he's putting another run on the board here, guys. Come on. 8, 9, it's 11 to 1. Come on. That's a 54, is a 32, runner first, fly ball to right, and that is that. No hits, no hits. So this is going to be easy to add up. So 8, 9, 10, 11 runs, 11 hits, and no errors for Baltimore. Cleveland, one run, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 hits. And one error, actually. Uh, yes. E4 error there. There you go. That is game number one of the season. Only 161 more, and we're done. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of like uh, I like how quick it plays. It's not too complex, which is nice. Uh, sometimes when I do the uh, National Pastime Next Generation Plus, which, again, if you guys are... Uh, wanted to see that. Oh, don't tell me I forgot to switch that back for you guys. Um, National Pastime Next Generation Plus, how to play the game, all the information, lefty righty matchups built into the APBA system. Uh, there is intentional walks, bunting, hitting, running, base stealing, park factors. Park factors come into play. Uh, blah, 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 which is nice. Player cards and how, you know, kind of shows you how to use the system and gives you some examples. So pretty detailed explanation. Uh, here's how to play. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Looks all good. Summaries. But here is the best thing is um, if you go to the miscellaneous. I mean, look at all the different seasons. They have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of seasons. They have uh, stamina, pitcher rating sheets you can get, um, unusual play field distribution charts, park factor charts, lineup sheets, uh, your manager called base stealing charts. Uh, for each of the different seasons. And uh, these are the Excel files. You can download and play all the different games as well. So uh, super good stuff there. You know, if you, uh, you can look at um, Rob Explanation Point, R-O-B space Explanation Point. He did a whole 2018 Boston Red Sox replay using National Pastime Next Generation Plus. He's done a great job of it and shows off the system really well. 
And um, so highly recommend you check that out if you haven't seen his stuff yet. But yeah, I like, uh, I like, I knew APBA was simple uh, ish compared to some of the other games I have. Doesn't mean it's better or worse than other things I have. It's just simpler, but it does play a lot faster because it is simpler. So if you want a quick game, I, I definitely need to find out more about the master rules and double checking everything. So I'm going to be placing my APBA order out there. Speak of the devil, there's Rob explanation point right now. Uh, so yeah, Rob, I was showing him, um, I was showing them the uh, National Pastime Next Generation, uh, you know, where to get all their infor uh, information on that system. And I was talking about how you, uh, you've done a replay of the 2016 Boston, uh, 2000, I'm sorry, 2018 Boston Red Sox. And you're almost completed with the whole 162 games so far. So congrats to, on hit that. But uh, if you want to find out more about National Pastime Next Generation Plus, which is an offshoot of APBA. But yeah, I I don't have uh, um, any problem with uh, APBA, especially with the master stuff, because it adds a lot more, a lot more to the game. So I think that'll help. Uh, so I need, need to order some stuff from APBA. The basic set and the master set, and uh, go from there, I guess. See if I can continue figuring it out. Um, where is your. Oh, Baltimore, Baltimore. Okay, these are all Baltimore. So there was game number one that I've ever done with uh, APBA. Didn't take very long after we figured out what all the little meanings mean, right? Game 122. Well, congrats, man. That's awesome. Uh, change the subject. Did you pick up the last 100 yards? No, I have not picked up the last 100 yards. Sorry. Game 122. Wow. He's, he, I mean, National Best Time Next Generation Plus, even though it's a little more complex uh, than APBA, it's still pretty simple, and you can go through it really quickly and just watch Rob uh, play his games. And, you know, if you have any questions, he's always talking to everyone and answering questions, does a great job of that. So just, you know, trying to figure out what all the numbers and symbols and everything represent. You know, once we figure that out, I mean, the game is pretty roll the dice, look at the number, and look at your boards, and, you know, go from there. The only time you have to really calculate it out is when you get a 1 through 11, and you need to adjust the pitcher grade up or down a little bit. Besides that, it's pretty simple, you know, calculate out your, your field ratings, and you're good to go. Well, it was all Baltimore early. Walk, fielder's choice, walk, home run, single, home run. That was all in the first inning. That's five runs. Second inning started off with a single strikeout, ground out to the pitcher. So two outs, home run, walk, double, three more runs in. And from there, it was just... Hold on to an eight to nothing lead, and they did most of that, and then tacked on a couple at the end. Your final score here: the Baltimore Orioles from 1970, 11 runs, 11 hits, no errors. The 1970 Cleveland Indians managed one run in the third inning. That came off of a single fly out to center field, strikeout, and then the big double from Ulander. Walk, fly out, but they can only muster one run on five hits and one error for the Indians. That's our first game of APBA. Probably see a lot more of this at some point. Definitely check out Rob Explanation Point, his channel. He's in the chat right now. If you just scroll over on the right-hand side of his name next to where um, he's typed something in the chat, you'll see three little dots 
you'll see three little dots next to his um, on the far right hand side of the chat box if you just click on those three little dots one of the uh, the top options will say go to the channel so click on Rob explanation point go to his channel sub in for him and I'm gonna have you know he'll he's on all the time running different things running his games but he does a lot of national pastime next generation plus and does a lot of other things so give him a like let him know that ID Jester sent you so Arnold Mad Dog 67 definitely check it out um oh Rob's almost at 100 subs now congrats man well we're gonna have to have a party when you get to 100 you have to thank me because I sent at least 50 over your way Viper Dave, thanks for coming by. Thomas, Mad Dog, Al Red Sox fan, Max Cornelius, great friend of the channel there. Definitely check out Al Red Sox fan. Tribe fan 879, he probably left when the uh, Orioles started scoring, but he's a good friend of the channel as well. So thanks everyone for coming out here and uh, spending a little bit of your evening with me tonight. Mike Hill was a big help in the beginning, gave us lots of information as well. Uh, so guys, I do appreciate everyone coming out and we will see everyone next time. Uh, once I'm going to play probably a couple of games offline, uh, see what other questions I have. So next time we do a live stream, I'll have like more question type things. And I'm sure my good friend Ken Castro out there, APA, APBA chatter and Al Red Sox fan or and, uh, Ken Castro, two big APBA guys. They'll be able to tell me what I did wrong, uh, what I should be looking at. I don't have a steel chart, so I don't know anything about like bunting or you know any of that stuff. So hopefully they'll give me some more information in the chat. So I'll have some more information next time we get together. We, of course, also have Dynasty League. We just picked up Dynasty League, a whole bunch of seasons of Dynasty League. So we're going to be doing some of that. So if you're interested in checking that out, looking forward to that. Of course, we have our 2011 Stratomatic uh, St. Louis Cardinal replay that we are in game number 16, 15, 16, something like that. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. Of course, not to be outdone, we got our... 2018 Atlanta Braves replay that we're still working on with a payoff pitch. And of course, not to be outdone, we of course have our Seattle Mariners 1995 last 30 games of the season replay to see if we can make the playoffs with the last 30 games being six and a half games down to California. So we're trying to see if we can uh, do as good as Seattle did in coming back at the end of the season to see if they can get in the playoffs. And uh, so that's that's going on as well. And of course, don't forget, I got to reach all the way over here now. Got to reach out and grab this. Where are they here? There. Come on. Come here. And don't forget, last but not least, we have our 1992 Pittsburgh Pirates a replay from 1992 with uh, Fall Classic Baseball. So, a lot of fun, fun stuff. So, thanks everyone for coming on by. If you're new to the channel, make sure you sub to all the people I talked about. Become part of our community and uh, sports gaming community. And uh, have a lot of fun and uh, learn lots of good stuff. And uh, we help one another and have a good time. So, all right, guys, we'll see everyone next time. Thanks so much.